The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Ladies and gentlemen, Hassan Minaj. so much. Thank you, everyone. Wow, thank you. One more time for Mr. John Kasich. Everybody, give it up for him, right? Wow. I mean, John, we, we have so much in common. You know, we're both from small towns. People can't pronounce our names. And neither of us will ever become president. It is... Amazing. No, 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 you guys, you guys, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's, it's, it's great because, John, you are a rational, sane, even keel, well thought out, seasoned politician. And you thought you could be the GOP nominee? You crazy, John. You crazy, man. You crazy for this one, Jay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Hassan Minaj. It is such an honor to be speaking at the correspondence dinner that nobody cares about. Wow. I mean, tonight is definitive proof that we all definitely haven't made it. Last year's speaker was Asif Manvi. Uh, so thank you so much, RTCA, for going back to back with your Browns. You guys are killing it. I love it. Next year's event, Malala, Syrian refugees, hosting it. I like that. Yeah, Malala. Tonight's event is brought to you by C-SPAN. C-SPAN, yes, yes, to the eight people not watching. C-SPAN is now in HD, which is great. So now you can see all that legislation not getting passed in 1080p. All the wrinkles and inefficiency, just, oh, so crisp. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are sitting here at the eve of the 2016 presidential election, where we, the American people, get to vote for who we hate the least. And right now, statistically, it looks like Hillary Clinton should win. That's about right. That is about right. That is the right response Hillary Clinton generally gets. Hillary Clinton is like the broccoli of presidential choices. You know what I mean? Where the Clinton camp is like, trust us, she's good for you. We're like, all right. Like, Hillary Clinton is like the Toyota Camry of presidential options. <laughs> like, if you were on The Price is Right and they presented you with a Hillary, it'd get the same response as a Camry. <laughs> Just dun 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 You're like, oh, oh no. I already had one in the 90s. <laughs> no. Bernie Sanders shook things up this year, right? Bernie? Great. Wall Street in the building. That's cool. Um, I like Bernie, though. Bernie was, Bernie was like America's cool substitute teacher, right? Like, he came in, he's like, everybody's getting pizza! And we were all like, hell yes! I've been waiting for pizza! And then Hillary's like the regular teacher, and she's like, hey, who's paying for the pizza? We're like, shut up, Mrs. C. The cool sub says we get pizza. And she's like, what? No, no, I'm cool. I whip. I nay nay. We're like, stop it, Mrs. C. Stop pandering. And then Donald Trump is like, Mexico's paying for the pizza. <laughs> and then dumb people are like, oh, yeah. Other country, pay for my pizza. That makes sense. What? <laughs> no, this is great, because like the Republican Party is here. What? Like, how is, how? Like, how is 86% of the GOP like, yes, racist Cheeto, finally. <laughs> like, I have yet, I live, in, I live in a liberal bubble, so I have yet to meet a Trump supporter. I mean, I did meet Paul Ryan three weeks ago, but you know, people change. And <laughs> usually, I'll see people in the street, I go, this guy looks kind of Trumpy. And I'll go, hey, man, who are you voting for? And they'll go, whoa, hey, whoa, hey. I don't like to talk about politics. And that dude's voting for Trump. That dude is definitely voting for Donald Trump. I don't like to talk about politics is the new I'm not racist, but. <laughs> like, 
everybody's been asking the question, how did he get so far? How did he do it? And really, the answer has been underneath our nose this entire time. If you've seen the hit film Back to the Future 2, <laughs> the character Biff is based on Donald Trump. This is real. 1989, Robert Zemeckis wrote the character Biff based on Donald Trump. Watch the movie, Orange Skin, Casino. He's trying to kill Michael J. Fox. This is real, and if that is true, we're in the wrong alternate timeline right now, you guys. <laughs> and everybody's asking, yo, where is credentials? No, where is the sports almanac? No wonder this guy has gotten so far. He already knows who's gonna win the NBA Finals. Sorry, it won't be the Cavs. I'm sorry, Mr. Kasich. <laughs> Donald Trump is an amazing professional wrestler. That's not a joke, no. He was inducted into the 2013 WWE Hall of Fame. This is not a joke. He clotheslined Vince McMahon. He shaved his head on stage. And I gotta say, he was an incredible wrestler. And I used to make fun of my cousin Sahil because he still thinks wrestling is real. And in 2016, we live in a world where Jesse Ventura became governor of Minnesota, Hulk Hogan took down Gawker, and Donald Trump could become president of the United States of America. And I'm just here to say, Sahil, you were right. Wrestling is real. Politics is fake. I just, I just gotta come to grips with the fact that I'm sorry that I'm, I'm coming off as nervous. Um, it's because uh, brown people, we're gonna get deported. So really, <laughs> this is just my farewell tour. I'm saying goodbye to America. I gotta do all my American stuff now. Like, I gotta go to Costco for the last time. <laughs> I gotta get knocked out at a Trump rally. I gotta do everything that makes this country great. There is a sliver of hope, there is a sliver. Barack Obama just recently endorsed Hillary Clinton and I gotta say, the media, you guys have had this double standard with Hillary. Just because she's a woman, you guys always go after, oh, she's too shrill. She's too serious. She dresses like she works at P.F. Chang's. And that's not fair. <laughs> because you know you wouldn't do that to Bernie. If Hillary dressed like Bernie, everyone would be like, hey, why is the pigeon lady from Home Alone 2 running for president? <laughs> what is going on? And the reality of the situation is, is Hillary is the dude in the relationship and we don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> we're all in bed with Hillary late at night and we're looking at her cell phone and we're like, hey, hey, who's Wall Street? <laughs> and she's like, don't worry about it, babe. It's just a friend from work. It's actually, it's actually insulting to say that Hillary Clinton is a dude. Her accomplishments are bigger than gender. Bigger than gender. Look at what she's done in her life. In 1974, did you know this? In 1974, she was on the inquiry staff to impeach President Nixon. She was doing that in her 20s. I was listening to Ja Rule in my 20s. She was impeaching presidents in her 20s. She wrote the Magna Carta in 1215. She invented the telephone with Alexander Graham Bell. This is all real information. It's on a server that you can never see. It is all real. So of course, she is gonna run for president. And if anything, she is gonna become president off of just sheer desire alone. She wants it more than any presidential candidate in history. Hillary Clinton wants to be president so bad, she's willing to sit in the same office <laughs> not a different office, not a replica scandal office, the scene of the crime. Now look, We've all been cheated on. Clap if you've been cheated on. Clap if you've been cheated on. Those of you guys not clapping, you've been cheated on. I was cheated on my senior year of high school. Janice Malo, I hope you're watching this. She cheated on me. She worked at Cinnabon at the mall. And to this day, I cannot walk through a food court without bawling. I'll just break down and cry. And Hillary Clinton is like, I want to manage Cinnabon corporate. 
So what do you do when you get cheated on? I cry and listen to Coldplay. Hillary Clinton <laughs> runs for president of the United States of America. Wow, indeed. So say what you will about Claire Underwood, but she has her eyes on the Iron Throne, and she is saying, come to mama. And at this point, she is waiting for someone to tie a bunch of balloons to the back of Bernie's chair so he just floats away. That's what she's waiting for. But enough talking about presidents. We're here to talk about Congress. It's so mean of me to talk about a job that you guys will never have. I mean... Oh, 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 every member of Congress wants to be president. Let's be real. There's a senator named Sheldon Whitehouse. <laughs> that is the most ambitious name for a title you will never have. That's like my name being Hassan, head of Homeland Security. It's just not happening. <laughs> no. Let's just, let's be real. Everybody here in the media, they're hard on Congress. They're hard on you guys. They say you're a do-nothing Congress, but you guys do a lot. You guys do, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You guys uh, go to fundraisers. You guys host fundraisers. You have your staff set up fundraisers for you to host. That's three things right there, and that doesn't even include all the time you spent trying to repeal Obamacare or not passing gun control. That's five things you guys do. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people at home don't know this, but your average member of Congress has to raise $18,000 a day just for their party. And it's incredible. For as much time as Congress spends denying poor people money, you guys sure as hell spend a whole lot of time begging for it. Don't worry, these jokes are for your donors at home, it's fine. You know, when I was in the third grade, my teacher, Miss Anderson, gave us this assignment. She said, write a letter to your local member of Congress asking what you'd like to change. And like a dummy, I wrote that letter. But what she meant was, is you're supposed to write that letter in the memo section of a signed check. Silly rabbit, letters are for Santa, checks are for Congress. <laughs> of course, I, maybe things just won't change because Congress's approval rating is 12%. 12%. That's not even one star on Yelp. <laughs> there are restaurants with rat infestations that are rated better than Congress. That means 12%. That means 88% of people hate your guts. Like if you're in a mall and 10 people walk past you, eight of them would hate your guts and the ninth dude hates you most of the time. 12%. Like if you were a cell phone, you would just be unusable. Maybe things won't change because you guys are just old. Like, your average member in Senate is 62 years old. My dad is 62. Like, you can't pass legislation when you can barely pass a bowel movement. You can't. I'm, I'm amazed Capitol Hill still has steps. It should just be ramps at this point. Now, ultimately, we're here to talk about the media, which covers the Do Nothing Congress. And here, as a fake journalist, I just want to give a shout out to other fake journalists. CNN is here tonight. <laughs> no, 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 no. CNN's cool, but what exactly do you guys do? Like, every time I turn, I turn on CNN, every time I turn on CNN, Wolf Blitzer is talking to a hologram, Don Lemon is hosting a panel on whether or not we should use the N-word, and then Anthony Bourdain is eating couscous. What do you guys do? You guys are basically Bravo with plane crashes. I don't know what you do. CNN doesn't like subtlety, though. Have you seen the headlines? It's just 100-point font, all caps. You guys write your headlines the way my dad writes his emails. <laughs> plane crash, many injured, Hassan come home. What? <laughs> Vice News isn't here tonight. I like Vice News, though. Vice News is cool because they'll just send your local barista to go talk to the head of ISIS. It's incredible. <laughs> You'll be like, why is Chad sitting down with Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi? <laughs> MSNBC is here tonight. MSNBC is cool, but you guys are like 
everybody's annoying vegan friend, it's like, we get it, you're right, I just don't wanna hear it right now. You guys are always like, I'm telling you, it'll make sense in 10 years. It's like, not now, Rachel, I'm trying to enjoy myself. I actually like MSNBC, they do the actual news. I just don't want you guys to end up like Al Jazeera America. Too soon? No, 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 when the ratings for Al Jazeera America came out, C-SPAN was high-fiving, they're like, yes! Three more viewers. I was interviewed once on Al Jazeera America, and I actually had to hold the boom mic while they interviewed me. <laughs> now, people ask all the time, did the media create Trump? And yes, you guys did. Donald Trump phones in his interviews to meet the press. And I don't mean like he doesn't try during his interviews. He literally calls in the way you and I order pizza. He's like, yeah, large pepperoni, no olives, don't send the Mexican. That's the way he does his interviews. <laughs> the New York Times, the Washington Post, they don't call him a racist. They say his comments are racially tinged. No, I'm racially tinged. <laughs> that dude is racist. <laughs> Straight up. The Huffington Post. You guys know the Huffington Post? You know the, the place where your Uber driver can write an article? The Huffington Post has a disclaimer on their website calling him a racist. BuzzFeed refuses to take money from the GOP or Donald Trump. You know BuzzFeed, the place that tells you which Disney princess you are? They have more journalistic integrity than the New York Times. And for the record, I'm a Jasmine, you guys are all Cruella DeVille. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I just hope that love overcomes fear. Don't you guys? Like, I just hope that's what ends up winning. And Fox News has taught me that. <laughs> Fox News is incredible because I've never seen so many people with spray tans hate people of color. <laughs> you guys are incredible, Fox News. And you guys are in New York, where I'm based out of. The enemy walks amongst us. And we're only five blocks away from each other. Daily Show, Fox News, and every morning I have to watch you guys, it's the same thing. Kill them, bomb them, stab them, USA, USA, USA. And I have to walk past you guys during lunch. And I'll see all these Fox News employees leave their building, cross the street, walk past me, and then line up for halal chicken and rice. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Racist Randy just wants that red sauce. I love it. I love that your brain can be racist. Your body will just betray you. I love that. I love that all morning they're just like, uh, Mexicans, all lives matter, Arabs, 1201. Shwarma time. I love that so much. I, 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 um, I, I, I don't even know how to pivot here, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> you know, um, what we saw in Orlando was one of the ugliest cocktails of the problems that we still see here in America. A cocktail of homophobia, xenophobia, lack of access to mental health care, and sheer lack of political will. And um, all of us satirists, we've all been yelling out, crying out for change. But the sad reality is that we are all complicit in what happened. Um, every day in our workplaces, in our homes, in our religious institutions, there is covert or overt discrimination or phobia towards people of different religious, racial, or sexual walks of life. And we just sit there and we let it happen because it doesn't affect our bottom line. Oh, I, I didn't say it, Hassan. I don't think it's that way. They said it, okay? It's not that simple, Hassan. And we just go on with our lives because it didn't affect our status quo. And the sad reality is stuff like this is gonna continue to happen unless we recognize that civil liberties are an all or nothing game. A rising tide lifts all boats. It's not pick or choose. So whether you like it or not, we all have to step up and fight for each other. Otherwise, the whole thing is a sham.
And until we do that, hijabis are going to get harassed in the streets. Members from the trans community are going to be demonized for using the bathroom. And my brothers and sisters in the African-American community, their spines are going to continue to get shattered in the back of paddy wagons until we stand up and say something. And the thing that hurts me the most is, I wish I would have done more. To my brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community, in every marginalized community, I'm sorry I didn't do more. And the same goes for Congress. You know, we look to you guys as our leaders. You make almost $200,000 a year to write rules to make our society better. Not tweet, not tell us about your thoughts and prayers, to write rules to make our society better. And ultimately, it comes down to money and influence. And right now, since 1998, the NRA has given $3.7 million to Congress. There are 294 sitting members of Congress that have accepted contributions from the NRA, and that doesn't even include the millions of dollars from outside lobbying. So before I get up here in my liberal bubble and I ask for gun control and universal background checks and banning assault rifles, we got to be able to have the conversation. And right now, specifically Congress, has blocked legislation for the CDC to study gun-related violence. We can't even talk about the issue with real statistics and facts. So I don't know if this is like a Kickstarter thing, but if $3.7 million can buy political influence to take lives, if we raised $4 million, would you guys take that to save lives? I, I, I don't know. I, ultimately, I just got to ask you this. Look. When I got into comedy, when you guys got into media, and when you guys got into politics, we wanted to do the best work we could possibly do. And is, is this what you want your legacy to be? That you were a could have done something Congress, but you didn't because of outside lobbying? That you were complicit in the deaths of thousands of Americans? And look, I, I know being a member of Congress is hard. You gotta placate your base, you gotta look out for re-election, you gotta answer to lobbyists. But please, persevere because our thoughts and prayers are with you. Good night.